I gravitated towards the Lakers. I gravitated towards the Angels and the Dodgers and USC. And really, it was just like, I, like the greatest moments of my life have been Kobe usually doing something. And I hearken back to like my mom, well, she worked at like a little orthopedic hospital and they, the Lakers would come in sometimes and she would work with him and she was like, you know, Kobe as a teenager is one thing, but she was always a huge fan every time she saw him on TV and it just, it would just blow my mind. And then you factor in the fact, like I played for the junior Lakers when I was like 11 and how they did it at the time was like, they would have kids go through drills. They'd have you do a bunch of stuff. And then they'd be like, okay, you got to play everybody on this team one-on-one. Like, so they drafted me on the, the team that I got drafted to. We ended up winning the title that year, which was cool. I was a backup, but got some play time the whole season mostly. And I actually hit like a game winner in one of the games. And I just remember before I had to, like the day, the night before, I was watching Kobe highlights. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not the best. I'm not going to be the best scorer when I get out there because all these kids are like, been playing basketball their whole lives. Like, this is me first time playing organized ball, but I grew up in the park playing it. So it's like, I got to, like, attack these dudes defensively. Like, I got to make sure I smother them. Like, that's what Kobe would do. That's what I'm going to do. And then I could score on anybody. I'll find a way to get a bucket. But when I went out there and went, like, pretty much one-on-one with everybody on the team, I literally beat everybody on the team one on one. It was just like sudden death for for a basket. One on one with everybody. Found a way. It was ugly, especially with like the the coach's son was like the best player on the team, and he like he hit me with an elbow as I was getting back down to the basket. That I'm not gonna lie, I was disoriented, but somehow I ended up stealing the ball, scoring, and like I earned everybody's respect that day on the team. They're like, okay. Like, he's what's up. And that, I just remember, like, literally my motivation was like, okay, I'm not going to get embarrassed. And what would Kobe do? Like, how would he attack it? And then later in the season, when I got some play time and, like, hit a game winner, I was at the free throw line for, like, the clutch free throws. And I was like, okay, I can't bank this in because Kobe would probably look at me and be like, that's trash, that don't count. And also I was like, I can't miss because my mom was right there. And I think about moments like that, and I harken back to, like, what would my sports hero do? And the fact that I was in the Alabama airport when all that stuff came out, I was just, like, I was angry at first. I was like, nah, this is bullshit. Like, this ain't true. Like, TMZ is trash for this. This this is the one time they're lying, and they got their facts wrong. And then when it happened, it was just like, I was in the airport, and, and, and it felt like I was well, the only hold person up, hold reacting up, hold to up. it. I just want to say one thing. You know, a lot of people have a lot of feelings about TMZ, and I get it. I understand. Like, it sucks to hear about, you know, your loved one dying, you know, from social media or from text messages before the authorities confirm it. But realistically, like, whether it's the authorities or whether it's the media, like, it doesn't change the fact that that person's gone and further we all know how the LAPD works and we all know how they drag their feet on things and it took them days to collect the remains so who knows how long it would have taken for us to know that Kobe died and how we had not known when we did we like we had we had to go through that stage of denial that stage of shock Bargaining and the fact that it happened on Sunday, so people were able to go out there and warn him right away. Like, so I get it. Like, it, it hurts. It sucks. You don't want that to happen to anyone. But at the same time, can't blame TMZ. Somebody else would have reported it. Yeah. If anything, you can blame the person who leaked it to them, who probably made money from leaking it. But regardless, like, I I get the premise of it, but this is just not the energy that we need right now. And so, yeah, yeah. Because as far as for me, like, this was, like, top three deaths. Like, my grandfather, Nip, and Kobe. Yeah, pretty much. Like, in my lifetime, like. And I, I said this on the podcast, but, you know, it's pretty unprecedented. Like, when you really look back on it, how many NBA greats are really dead? Like, 
there's not a lot. Like maybe Wilt, but Wilt bounced around so much that he didn't have the same ties to the community as Kobe, who played it for 20 years. Like Kobe is LA. Like if you say LA, and then you can't say you can't not mention. And Kobe's so great, and he's a global icon. You don't even need to say his last name. And that's the thing is like you know the closest precedent we really have is kind of Nipsey, what we went through last year. But Both honestly, on a Sunday. But honestly, like. And you know Nipsey's a legend as a man, as a person, as a as a business man, as a visionary, as someone who went against the grain, someone who created its own lane. But like in terms of bars and the rappers, like you know people liked him, people didn't like him. But in terms of Kobe, like nobody's arguing that man's greatness. You know, I mean, and there's so some stupid people on the like, internet. But... It's like that to the next level. Yeah, and it's like I think I, Kobe hurts in the same way Nipsey hurts, but for slightly different reasons. Because one was like, this dude came from nothing and worked his way up to, and, was, and wasn't and was even at his peak, not even close. Yeah, I Nipsey think was like, what, what, five years younger than us? Like, no, he wasn't. Nipsey was not that young. I mean, older, my bad. We were five years, we're five years younger than Nipsey. I'm my Something bad. like that. Freudian slip, my bad. Like, he's like 32, 33. Kobe's like 41. So I, we saw his whole career, and then we saw like the infancy of him, life after basketball, and it's like we're I'm both left with like, damn, what could have been for both these cats? I think my biggest thing, and that's my biggest biggest hurt on this whole thing, um, is just thinking about what Kobe didn't get to accomplish. And and you're talking about it with Nip, ascension as an artist. Kobe was really ascending as a personality, as a person, as someone who was finally letting us in, finally finally showing us him as a father fully and. And really embracing that. And and when I think about what he was trying to do for the WNBA, mentoring them, advocating for them, because he's, he grew up with sisters. He he has four daughters. He saw the power of women. He believed in the power of women. Yeah. He saw they were capable of the mama mentality and a mama mentality. And so he, he really appreciated that and respect that and loved it. And he wanted to help the WNBA proceed because he knew in the long run that would help Gigi and... Gigi's girls or whoever else wanted to play women's basketball. In I would help just no, just basketball in general. Yeah. I would help elevate the game across all boards, and that's something that a lot of people will say. That's why this generation got more love for Kobe than it'll ever have for Jordan, because we were consumers of Jordan. We were like, yeah, we helped elevate Kobe. We grew up with Kobe. He, he was our childhood. He he gave us moments on our Christmas. He gave us moments on our Easter. He gave us moments, you know. Martin Luther King Day, on Black ba- History Day, New ba- Year's Day. Literally like, the basketball court. He was there all court. the time. In a like, classroom in the third grade. Kobe, somebody blocks a shot in class. You get him back on the basketball court. Okay, Kobe, game winner. And Even if it was nothing. Like, so, so like, that's yeah, the lexicon. Yeah, so like, yeah, it's like the, the inner child in me, you know, is grieving for that because I remember those moments with my, my, my grandpa and my dad and watching those games and, and really growing a love and understanding from basketball through Kobe. Even though I am a Clipper fan, I always respected his greatness and his creativity and him just unauthentically and unapologetically being himself. But more importantly, you know, when I look towards the future, I, I, I'm just upset because Kobe was really trying to own everything. And we talk about diversity and we talk about inclusion and we talk all, all that stuff. And really, it doesn't matter until we have it at the top. And we finally had someone who was, who Doing was right it. there. Who was on the verge? Who was going to create all these different own lanes? And his female assistant and now coach, he's gone. his female assistant coach, who was she in particular, mother of three. You know, now the her, her husband, her husband was like, "I have three daughters and no mom. What am I going to do?" You look at the baseball coach, seven hundred wins. He was he had players coming out on his behalf. And you look at the three girls, Gigi and her two friends, who are on that helicopter, and this is unfortunate because you don't know what those other two girls could have been. They could have made it professionally. And it's just, it's sad because there's no one you can really point the blame at on this. Like, when someone dies or something happens, we were quick to be like, man, this could have been prevented. The Nipsey thing, we all know and feel that could have been prevented and should have been prevented. We look at the Kobe situation, like... It could have been prevented, but let's be honest. People die in car crashes. People die in their sleep and don't wake up. People are 
hell, there are babies born, stillborn. Like things like this happen. And when life like when something like this in life happens, it, it really makes you realize how small your problems are. And that's kind of crazy to think about. But when I look on this Kobe situation, I just for me, like I'm great. I was I'm lucky enough to even be able to say I, I've lived through that. And I sit back and look and think about how. Yeah, outside noise, guys. Thanks. I sit back and I think about all the great memories I have of a dude like Kobe. Just like the culture of L.A. basketball. The fact that, honestly, if you really think about it in California, like Kobe was the reason a lot of guys wanted to turn pro coming out of high school. Like he was one of the the get, like one of the the top people. Like people say Kevin Garnett, but really when you think of people coming straight out of high school, you think of Kobe, and you think of what he did for L.A. And you think of the fact that this man was becoming this tycoon in all these different industries, or at least trying to, and becoming like a servant, so to speak. And he didn't go to college. Yeah, he like <laughs> he literally didn't go to college, but. When I look at him, when I look at Jordan's impact, I'm sorry, I'm gearing towards Kobe just because I can see, like, I can see DeMar DeRozan. I can see Russell Westbrook. I can see a whole generation of people who he's touched personally. And, I can see WNBA players. And I'll, I'll talk about this all the time, but, like, you know, everybody always, always says New York is, like, the mecca of basketball. But, like, when you really look at it, like, Kobe on Who the have they really put out like in a while? They haven't. Okay, you might get. Are, are you talking about? The cast like, have already talked about it statistically. Look at who the best. Look at the names you just named: DeRozan, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Kawhi Leonard. Like I, 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 I cut. I, there's like 15 people I didn't mention. Dame Lillard. Like all those people. He came from Oakland. All those people grew up watching Kobe. They grew up when the when New York was sleeping. Or in fucking snow, or doing whatever the fuck they do, That's or around in front. and Marbury, but yeah, and Mellow. But when when they were asleep, we were out here watching Kobe, and so just to see that influence across the generation, and if you look at the common denominator between all those guys, like they're dogs, they're assassins, there's alphas, and and that comes from the the Kobe tree, the Mamba mentality. And if, I don't know if everybody uh, is an Arrow fan, but if you saw the Arrow series finale and, like, the whole Crisis on the Finish at Earth thing, spoiler alert, Kobe's like the Oliver Queen of, like, our universe. So is, like, there, any, is there anything else you want to say before we move on? Man, I'm just, I'm just really praying for the families because, like, I've lost people close to me. Like, I, I've, I've seen people die in front of me. And when you lose someone who's like the patriarch of your family, that changes you. Like that changes how you even see things, what you want to be almost. It almost gives you like, a not a sense of purpose, but it almost gives you something extra to live for. Like I, I lost this person, but I don't want to lose what they meant and what they did going forward. Yeah, man. I think the saddest shit was watching Shaq. That like, hurt. Shaq like, and T Mac. It was unbearable. Like Shaq, the Diesel, the most dominant ever. Just seeing him cry like that. The dude who's brought me so many laughs. And as a workaholic, to hear him say, like, guys, I work too much. I, I don't even be reaching out to you like as much as I should. He said, last and time we like, talked was the 50 point game. I said, give him 50. He gave me 60. You're like, fam, y'all ain't talking three years? And, it has to, like, it's, and, and like, that's something I think about. Like, as a workaholic, as like someone who works all the time, who enjoys working who prefers to work than be on vacation like just seeing Shaq say that like that really rocked me to my core like I was just like and that's why I've just been in this haze all week because it's like I've drawn drawn so much motivation from the Mamba mentality and just to see him go out like that like who the fuck am I but a mortal like but I mean and, he, and, was, and he was mortal and too though and, and that's what I'm saying that's what I'm saying is like it just makes you feel even more mortal because I'm not per- a person who's scared of death. Like I'm not, yeah. I've never been afraid of death. Like, but this just made me really think of like not fearing death, but fearing not finishing what I'm supposed to do. Like, 
And even like and it just puts you on a whole different like outlook. And then just thinking about that Shaq shit, like I I work and it's like 